that I had to do it. I just couldn't take this. It was one woman after another. I mean, I was it was awful. So I just I thought I cannot live in this town. That was when I left town. Mm -hmm. I said I cannot be here. We had the nucleus of our own friends and family, and and uh, I took advantage of the fact that I had very dear friends in in California, and I just made plans to get out of town and send for Tommy later mm -hmm. and just get established somewhere else and then send for my old boy mm -hmm. and live my life away from Lance and the whole thing. I mean, it's a drastic, drastic change and it was, it was embarrassing. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how it gave me the strength to do that at the time. But I just thought I'm going to do it. And then I contacted my friends in California, and they just said, come ahead. But then nothing is easy, because that's when it took so long for me to get Tommy down there. Mm -hmm. And you can't blame him for thinking that he had been abandoned. Mm -hmm. I had him say with my, my very, very close well, a really kind of a relative in law, my 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 uh, sister in law's sister and her husband, a beautiful, good Christian family, mm -hmm. and uh, they were going to look after him temporarily. Well, then with the not even with the passport like it is today, it's tough enough. But you just, you have to, you know, get a sponsor mm -hmm. to, you know, to be, be, be responsible if you can't support him. And you had to do the f papers and go here and go there. And they went into weeks and it went into months. And uh, finally, um, oh, it was, uh, how did this work? It was Bing Crosby that sponsored Tom. And I, I was in uh, the, uh, there and I had met before, just from traveling back and forth, had met all the Crosbys, two mutual friends. But while we were still in Vancouver, uh, Lance and I were separated at that point. But I'm still in the apartment on Granville, uh, Granville Street, Granville and Fourth. It isn't there anymore. And uh, so, knowing the Crosbys and the thing, the phone rings, and Mum, I was about to go to see uh, some something or something, and Mum was there to look after Tommy. I didn't even have a bed for him, but. Uh, I answered the phone, and he said, Doris, and I said, it's a Bing Crosby. <laughs> he said, oh, hi, what are you doing? Are you, are you in town? He said, yeah, I'm going to uh, do a concert at the, uh, at the, I think it was the Orpheum. And that's what Lance and his band are playing. And Bing and Ray Milland who was an actor who had just won the Academy Award for Lost Weekend. It was a big picture. It was like just one of the biggest stars. So the two of them. So I said, oh, really? And he said, he said, and that was going to be, uh, I guess that was going to be tomorrow. I said, okay. He said, so, so we said, well, how will we meet? And I said, well, where are you staying? He said, staying at the Vancouver Hotel. I said, okay, well, okay, then I'll just, uh, then I'll meet you at the hotel. So, I thought, vengeance is mine. It couldn't have been anybody in the world that Lance adored more than Bing Crosby. And I, and I did too. But I thought, what the face would do when he sees little old me with his idol. And it was almost, well it was like a, a vengeance. Like I'm not even going to introduce him. Ooh, which is so stupid.
<laughs> so, so that's what we did. So we went in and, we, and Bing and, uh, and Ray have a dressing room off stage. And, and uh, the band is all lined up. And he said, so Bing, I said, well, I better go and sit out in front. So he said, which one is he? Oh. I said, he's the tall, good-looking blonde in the front. They said, he's lead sack. He said, he said and, and Bing could tell that I, I still cared. I mean, <laughs> it was a little, a little weird. So when time came or something, and Bing was at the theater was packed. And uh, so we, I understand that we just, when he came out, he passed through the band and they said, are you less? And he threw on that bone. And I thought that, because I, I had said to him, just acknowledge him a little. It would mean so much to him. So he said, okay. And they said, well, which one is he? So that was really cute of him, because yeah. like he'd known him all his life. <laughs> I'm surprised that Lance didn't tell you that story, because that was really something to him. Yeah. So anyway, that's what we did. Then, then uh, uh, we got into the thing about Tom, what was the problem with Tommy? So I just said, said he said, just mention my name. He said, I'll sponsor him. I said, oh, well, yeah, I wouldn't want to bother you with that. Yeah. And that was the power that you need. You need somebody that is really you know, wealthy enough to maintain the look after a child for God knows you know, how long. So I said, oh, God, would you do that? He said, don't give it a thought. That's how I got the wheels turning. Because I just had mentioned being Crosby, and he was a very big star at the time. And it, that security was enough for them to know that he would. And that's what we did. So I had. Uh, I've, uh, every bad thing was settled here, and then he came down, and a friend of mine. By that time, I had been in California forever, and then I was in Las Vegas. I got a friend that drove me to the airport, and by that time, he was maybe eight, nine, ten? Six, I think. I don't know. How long I, I, I've got a terrible memory. Anyway, uh, that's when we settled down, and that's when, um, over a period of time, I married Paul Campbell, who was a very nice guy. He was too. They're, they're very nice, both of them. And uh, so Tommy pretty well finished his growing up there, went to school, got a job, worked, and uh, that's about it. I don't know. Then he had to, he had to come back for something. And my mom came down and got him, and he had came back, and we went through the whole thing again. Something else, though, I forget what it was. And then that, and that, no, and then he moved to California, and that was through the hippie era. Yeah. And then he was with all these other kids. Well, they're all hippies. He was a hippie. <laughs> You know, that's what we call them, yeah. And just uh, go all through that whole psychedelic thing. And uh, and I think all that time he must have been insecure. And I really do think, he did think that his father abandoned him, which was not fair. Well, he did. But I think that he felt that I had too, but at that point, you're too young to understand that I kept on trying and doing everything I could, and still having to maintain, make myself a living, and so we've had a kind of a sad off and on background. <laughs>